great morning. Great morning. Great morning. And welcome back to another episode of Great Morning. I'm your host, Christian Murmur, Merms, Merm Dog, whatever the fuck you want to call me. And to the bottom left of my computer screen, we have the Fact Queen, my sister from the East, that Puerto Rican mamacita from Spanish Harlem. Stephanie, you're great. How are you doing, sir? Thanks a lot. That was awesome. I, I, I love the love. Um, What's good, y'all? I'm fucking great. You know, despite the fact that um this Puerto Rican mamacita, you know, she's been having some, you know, health issues. But, you know, I I, I think I'm pretty fucking spiffy, you know, despite you're the in fact great that, spirits. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm you know, I have a brain tumor, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> that's how we introduce that. That was kind of dope how you came out with that. Just that like, was good. That was some own like you just own that shit. That's how she said it to us the other day. I was saying that to her. I was she said, like, good morning, everyone. Uh, I have a brain tumor. And we're like, oh, what the fuck? That's not. That's not how that comes up in a text message. That's yeah, well, you know, it's just like it is what it is. Hey, guys, I have a fucking brain tumor. It's not it's not deadly. It's not life threatening as of yet. But, you know, it's there. You well, know, you can see as your friends here, not just, you know, your co-workers on the podcast, but as your friends, <laughs> well, you know, we got a little like <laughs> like that's that, you know, text concerned us a little bit. We, Yeah, I know. I mean, I, I, I kind of like framed, you know, the. A nice little handful of people, but I'm just like, guys, I'm all right. You know, the doctor said I was not fucking life threatening, not yet. You know, that's great. You know, so we're just gonna, you know, just make sure that that shit yeah. doesn't grow. And you know, if we got to take that bitch out, we're gonna take her out. And then we're still gonna have Stephanie. What are mm-hmm. we call that from Great Morning? And that's it. And we still. Gonna- <laughs> yeah. And you know, I think that just shows the epitome of you as a person yourself is that like even with that you showed us the humor behind it immediately (laughs) as you were telling us and i i find you i really enjoy that about you and i'm glad you're in good spirits and we're all in good spirits now because of that yeah but how are you guys doing like i want to know about y'all like how are you guys doing whoa 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 hold on i will ask jimmy how he's doing Excuse me. Hold on. Let's let's take it easy. You can ask me how I'm doing. You can't ask him. In fact, don't don't even talk to Jimmy for the first five minutes of every podcast we do. I wanted to see how everyone is doing. I am. I'm. 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 Uh. I'm good. All right. So moving on to uh. You know. Our- <laughs> That was early. You guys getting started early on. <laughs> to the left of my computer screen, <laughs> we have the boss, yeah. the pimp, yeah. the CEO, yeah. the chief, slightly special himself, Jimmy the Shooter. How you doing today, bro? Yeah, man. I've been up since three o'clock. I'm on nice. my third cup of coffee, but I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. I'm glad to hear that. How was uh, I know you had work yesterday. How was that? Yeah, work man. on a Saturday. Yesterday work was a pretty big deal. I got to meet some pretty um heavily influential people within the industry of what I'm working in. Some some wine dines as they like to see to say, you know what I'm saying? And everything was real smooth, everything was real easy going. And uh, you know, they were impressed. We were impressed that they were impressed. Everybody was impressed. So there was pressed upon us the possibilities of impressions that everyone is impressive. Wait, can you repeat that? That was great. <laughs> Please repeat that. Ten times. Well, call me impressed. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, man, you know, I'm actually really excited uh, for today. It's Sunday. My Rams are playing, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Season's back and started. I'm about to work out, about to drink this coffee, handle some chores, and get ready to start the week all over again. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, the Rams are playing. We don't really talk about sports, but, uh, yeah, everyone's – my team's playing. Uh, The Patriots are playing. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to watch them. I think that's going to happen while we're recording this. Can I get your your Hulu password? Yeah. (laughs) 
Yeah, you want it right now as we record live? Yeah, live. All right. Yeah, real so, friends share passwords. Yeah. So capital R. Here, you writing this down? <laughs> I'm good though, man. How you doing, Merms? I am I'm great, man. Um, you know, I'm happy to be here. I'm always happy to do this uh every week. But you know, last week we had some fun. We do those every once in a while. Those just the, the three of us, you know, just uh doing some trivia. And you had a great game. I you know, I'm gonna go on a, uh, go out on a limb here. And say, I think it was one of my top top three yeah. favorites of Jimmy's games. That was a great game. You thought I mean, of last want, episode. We could always run that game. We, we could. I, I. You know what? I don't think I'd ever be upset about that. But yeah, man. I think I thought that was a great game. But you know, that was just the three of us. Now we're back into the game. You know, now we got we got we 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 got a guest. Do you do you think do you think it's time though, guys? You think it's you think. You think it's time. I think it's time. Stephanie, you think it's time? Well, fucking yes, I. Oh, I think it's time. I think it's time we uh we introduce our special guest of uh this this day. I almost said evening. It is not evening, but we have uh with us a a producer who actually introduced us to a past guest, Crisis. Um, that was uh two episodes ago, I believe. Here we go. Our producer, our friend, one. How you doing today, bro? What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me. <laughs> yes so um I, I appreciate the introduction <laughs> yeah you know the, the crowd loves you already man i love um, it i love it you know that's the first time i've ever seen that uh that hat what is that the yankees and the mets what is oh that? yeah it's uh the subway series uh edition where do you where i don't think i've ever seen that and i i'm not it's, far from new york so i've got i've gone there a lot and you know you see a lot of things for sale is that where'd you find that uh i picked it up in my local hat store i'm uh in, in uh hudson county jersey oh okay okay where are you yeah, from yeah. originally, bro? Originally, I'm from Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. Brooklyn, stand up. Brooklyn, yeah, yeah. Stand up. Brooklyn, y'all out there? Oh, yeah, we here. We're Where are everywhere. your tips? Y'all don't play. I'll pull them out. They're right here. <laughs> <laughs> really Fantastic, man. They're in the well, box. Hey, man, we, we really appreciate you coming on. Um, but you know, so you, you've got like, what, what are you doing with the producing? You got like, uh, like your own uh, media outlet for this or like you, you represent uh, a lot of artists. So, um, Basically, I'm working with a couple of artists right now. I'm okay. executive producing a couple of projects. The one being the project that Crisis just came out with. Another mm -hmm. one that I'm um, currently working on with another artist. So, um, you know, whenever we're working on projects, I'm always looking for a uh, different type of media outlets and trying to connect these guys with different um, platforms to just get themselves out there and just give them uh you know new ears new fan base you know new people to communicate with and kind of get themselves out there so um you know i came across the podcast and i was like listen you know i'm working with some artists you know we're willing to sit down and sit down and talk if you guys are willing to you know hear us out and check out the music and the content and you know it kind of just speaks for itself yeah, and I, uh, I, I mean, so far I've enjoyed the work. I, I really enjoyed. Uh, I think we all did. We all enjoyed uh, having Crisis on as well. He was a really interesting person, and uh, I remember specifically because yeah, I'm going to say this because we've been going through the words of the day for <laughs> uh, our season finale, and I personally, I, th I think everyone did, but like he, he had a very go back to that episode if anyone's listening to this and listen to his word of the day. It's a very simple word of the day, but it's actually quite hilarious if you. Yeah. if you listen to it again thank you for introducing us to him and uh thank you for coming on again but like what what made you get started in all this why'd you want to you know start doing this so i've always just kind of had a general love for music like as a kid i was like one of those you know sit by the boom box record mm -hmm. the songs that you want to hear make my little tapes go to school listen to them my friends would dub copies of my tapes and you know little stuff like that and that's kind of how it started and then um from there um I went to Job Corps and a friend of mine was in the DJ club and he started putting me up on like B sides where they would have like just the instrumentals. And I remember listening to like just beats. And then um, we got into like the whole sample era, you know, he was playing different samples, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So originally I was just a lover of music. Then when I was about, I want to say 15, I moved from, from the Bushwick section of Brooklyn to, into Brownsville. <laughs> and when I moved to Brownsville, I met this kid named Wise who had a studio in his house. Like he was like the local, um, he was like the, the go-to guy in the neighborhood for, for recording. So it's like if you lived in the neighborhood, you went to Wise to get your shit recorded. So 
I linked up with him, you know, like just through people in the neighborhood and, you know, stuff like that. And he started teaching me music. He started teaching me production. You know, I was recording in his house for him. You know, I just kind of became like a student to like the whole um, engineering and producing aspect of it. And for a long time, it was just like me kind of just soaking up all the information that he would give me. And he ended up starting an independent label. And then from there, we kind of like partnered up together. And at the time, I still wasn't producing. I was just kind of like finding my own way in 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 that like realm, just like recording with him, A and R for him, like yeah, and you were uh, still like learning like everything as well. Yeah, you know, kind of introducing him to artists and stuff like that. So I want to say, I want to say like sometime, I think 2005, mm-hmm. I, uh, we went down South. We tried to like get this uh, independent label kicking off. Things didn't really work out. And um, prior to moving down South, I had uh, interviewed for a job at Sony BMG. So um, I didn't hear nothing from them. So I just like said, fuck it, let's go down South. Let's try to make this move happen, whatever. And then we moved down South and within like a month of being down there, things just like weren't panning out. You know, we didn't really have the resources to keep things going the way we wanted to. And then it was like uh, my boy ended up getting locked up out there. So now it's like I was out there with him. He's locked up. I'm running things by myself. And then there was kind of like things were like, you know, there was a weak foundation. So things generally started to crumble after he got locked up. And it was just kind of like, you know, I went to go visit him and I was like, yo, bro, I can't keep doing this. I got to go back to New York, you know, because I can't I can't, you know, keep this keep juggling this whole situation. And um, he was like, yo, he completely understands not to worry about it. I moved back to New York. As soon as I moved back to New York, the same week I get the call from Sony. They're like, hey, listen, you interviewed for this position a few months ago. Like, are you still interested in the position? And I'm just like, hell yeah. So (laughs) I remember like my first day walking into the building and I'm sitting in the lobby and I'm just like, I can smell the loud in the hallway. It was just like the energy was just there. It was like you could kind of hear like the music, like just like the bass from the walls, but it wasn't coming through. What was that? Was it kind of like nostalgic for you? Because it's like, you know, oh like- yeah, it was because it was such a great time in music. Like like when I started at Sony, that was when um Chris Brown was like really really getting popping at the time. Um, this was like when Diddy dropped Press Play, when Hove dropped Kingdom Come. Um, this was like graduation era, you know, and that, it was oh, like yeah. around that time in music, you know, so it's like to kind of like be there, like, like we hosted the hip hop is dead, um, listening party, I, I, you know what I'm saying at our, and, um, on the main stage at the studio. So, you know, once I was in there, it was kind of like my dream job. I was like, oh, this is perfect. I'm, I'm going to die in this building. Like I'm going to be here forever. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I was working like 48 hour weeks and plus and loving it. And, um, fast forward you know the music industry started changing and you know people smaller studios started taking over and they ended up shutting down sony sony uh bmg the the main studio so you know from there it was kind of like what do you do now the dope thing is that at that time you know the the two the two the two or two and a half years that i was there i was able to learn so much and soak up so much game though that it was like I learned from a lot of different producers, from a lot of different engineers, and I kind of just took everything that I learned from my boy and and the couple, and the time that I was working at Sony, and started just doing my own thing. I invested in like my own music equipment. I uh, got like a computer. I got like the software, and I kind of just started experimenting and and really just dove into it. And um, and that's pretty much like how the whole thing started in a nutshell. You think that it's a strength, man? That like because. It's never a great thing when corporations like monster corporations kind of fall and disseminate. But at the same time, you know, it's a great thing when major corporations kind of fall and disseminate because now it gives <laughs> other people, right, with the same intentions and ambitions a shot. You know, it's kind of like. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I feel like I feel like I would have went in that direction anyway because I was already so involved in what was happening like as far as um like behind the scenes just like witnessing things from 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 different um aspects and 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 then being able to have that dynamic where you know you could just uh you know you're coming into work any regular night you know thinking it's going to be a regular night and and walks uh you know j-lo's walking down the hall with mark anthony 
you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, you know, like something like that, or, you know, uh, they're hosting um, these interviews and Angie Martinez has, you know, T.I. and Tiny downstairs in one of the big rooms. And, you know, like there's just all these things that are happening where it's like, you know, to have that, you don't always have that accessibility outside of those spaces. So, you know, although I do attribute a lot of my stuff to them closing, I feel like I would have went in that direction anywhere anyway. So, Jimmy, you pretty much uh, said I like how you said it, but you pretty much said like the equivalent of when one door closes, another one opens. Oh, absolutely. No, I would say yes. Oh, you kind of like shook your head, like like shut oh the fuck God. up, like oh, I, like I'm helping you. Out. I don't know, man. You gotta look back, because then you gotta calibrate the people at the same. Like, for example, SoundCloud rappers, right? And okay, I love, uh, I love art in all forms. I love SoundCloud. I love how people put out music, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, there's lit- just like there's money for everyone. And just like there's an audience for everyone, right? Sometimes some audiences just so happen to kind of catch that spark flare of popularity a lot quicker than other other like you know what I mean like audiences because they're louder, they're more out there. You know what I'm saying? Like for example, kind of like we'll say like the trippy red music scenes, right? Where you get like some very young individuals, you know, maybe born right around 2000, 2001, right? And they don't understand, like, they don't, they just, they just know what they know, but they're like, oh, yeah, man, like, free the world. And on this, like, huge, like, government shutdown and people and repression and this and that and, like, freedom of expression. And they're very rainbowy, you know, they're very happy. They're very, like, you know, eccentric people, but they get word out quick, but they're not vibing with a lot of the artists that was, you know, been making music since 1995, or 1990, or you know what I mean, like some of the old heads, like 1985, that have been in the game and really kind of doing it and moving through. People that are like 35 and up, right? That have been shout like out to Rufus Black plus years. There's right. a disconnect between the the listeners that have been listening for only five. You know what I mean? So it's like that evolution is kind of coming with the audience. You know what I'm saying? The evolution is coming, and nowadays with SoundCloud iTunes, you know, Linktree, Spotify, there's just, there's an audience for everyone, but you really got to kind of find that branch because the tree is just all over the place. I feel like that. I feel like there's a research in the, um, in the nineties culture though. I feel like there's like a, uh, there's like a small group within the new, com- within the new school. I hope that, so. Um, no, well, I mean, I'll tell you why, right? Like I got a 15 year old daughter. So it's like every now and then. I'm always putting her up on music. She's putting me up on music. So it's funny because it's like, we'll go artist for artist. There's some days where she's like, all right, you got to listen to this. Uh, What was the last um, Doja Cat? She had me sitting listening to the Doja Cat album. So I'm sitting here listening to this. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to listen to this. And now after we're done, you're going to listen to the score. We're going to listen to the Fuji's. I'm going to put you up on game. So it's like, you know, we're going album for album. So it's like, as I'm introduced, so now, she listens to this stuff and she's like, she goes and she plays it for her friends. So now she's like, oh, dad, like me and my friends were like listening to, to the Fuji's at school. And now I'm like, OK, you know, and then they're like and then she's like, oh, did you hear this guy named Nas? And I'm looking at her like, Girl. <laughs> like, have I heard of this guy named Nas? Never heard of him. Yeah, no, who? Like, so, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> but it's funny because it's like it, because she hears of Lauren Hill, then it's like, you know, now the first thing they do is they get on their phones. You type in Lauren Hill. And now it's or, or the Fuji's, and then it gives you recommendations. So now it's like she goes from you know uh, um, killing me softly to if I rule the world, you know. Oh. And then it's and now it's the easy transition into you know into uh, you know from Nas to Mob Deep or you know other things like that. And it's and and I feel like it's just those little sparks that if you if we keep just putting the younger generations on to different like just stuff within their realm that it doesn't have to be exactly what we listen to. You know, I wasn't the biggest Fuji fan, but I know that like Lauren Rehel has a great voice. Fuji's uh, White Clef is an amazing producer. They make great music. And it's something that she can, I can, I can transition her into without exposing her to like, you know, Biggie and all the crazy shit, you know? So it's kind of like that in between realm. I like that. I like that that you said that because I, I have a 15 year old daughter too. And, you know, but since, since she was a little girl, I, I always put her on to like, I tell her the real <laughs> music, you know, because yes. like, you know, I like 
I don't don't get me wrong. Like there's there's songs, you know, right now that like I'll definitely bop to like because you know it's 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 nice. You have a lot of these songs are just very catchy hooks and bridges, you know. So it and 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 the beat, the beat has is, is very important. Those three things are is 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 what's making the music right now. Because if you really listen to a lot of these rappers' lyrics, it's what the hell are you saying? Like really? And then and then it's not only that, but it also kind of like the people that quote write for them, they have to like dumb it down, like really dumb it down so that this can be a hit song because what this generation listens to is, is very different. So with my daughter, you know, I, I, I put her on to Earth, Wind and Fire. I put her on to Shaka Khan. I put her on to Rakim. Earth, Wind, Fire. Guess, yeah, what? My, my daughter listens to Tina Marie. She listens to Rick James. She listens to Whitney Houston. My daughter loves and loves, loves Lauren Hill. Like I made her listen to Lauren Hill, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, because that album is so great and it's so empowering. And I'm just like, you know, like listen to what she's saying. You know, she's she, she's she's telling you to respect yourself and to do this and to do that, you know, and and just to like listen to like my like rather to see my daughter's playlist and then like listen to her friends listening to the shit that I put her onto and they're like yo this is fire I like like my daughter comes to me and she's like oh did you hear Whitney Houston this I'm like bro like who like the same thing it's like who are you talking to like what? exactly what no, I know you ever, you ever put them onto a country song Oh my God! Hell yeah! My daughter knows about Carrie Underwood. My my daughter knows about um, what's her name? Uh, Dolly Parton. My daughter listens to Frank Sinatra, guys. Okay, that's amazing. I was was gonna say like I'm impressed when a kid is like all the way from like Chris Stapleton to Nirvana to like Lupe Fiasco, all the way to like Trippy Red. Like they just music you know what I'm saying? i think that that's that's the it's the ipod generation see we didn't have that you know what i'm saying like if you think about it like i feel like the the kids that grew up with ipods versus like people that grew up listening to uh CDs. terrestrial radio you know what i'm saying like read because it's music is regional so it's like <clears throat> we didn't get the exposure to southern music west coast music you know we got the mainstream stuff but we didn't get everything like with with the day of the internet now it's like these kids have access to all of it you know they they have um they have a range that we didn't have back then you know like they can they can really experiment with what they with with their palettes you know where it's kind of like if you didn't listen to hip hop and you grew up amongst hip hop culture and you try to like listen to some other shit around people, they looked at you like you was a weirdo, you know? So I was kind of like, I was that kid because, you know, like my father grew up listening to like Latin jazz. My mom grew up listening to like soul and um, what was that shit? Uh, freestyle. They was listening to freestyle in like the, in the eighties and nineties and shit. Yeah. So it was like that. And then salsa, salsa was heavy in Puerto Rican. So it's the same wave. So I'm like the, like I adopted hip hop culture because that was what was around me, not because that's what my parents were listening to, you know? So I had all these different ranges of, in my ears, although I wasn't necessarily like listening to it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like now, like um, it put me in a space where like, I was kind of like too artsy for like the hood hood kids, but too hood for the artsy kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it was like, so but like now today that's everybody everybody has that range now you know where it's like they're listening to everything because of the internet Mm -hmm. i love love it man and it's it's what's really weird is you see with music you see the evolution of the mentality of mankind like people were so like we are so even now right we're extremely intelligent but people are all <laughs> we so think so fucking stupid. <laughs> okay, Merms. Right? Negative Nathan. No, no, Merms is you're right, man. But like people are also we're like so stupid. Like we are like rats. I'm a, I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Like we just we psychologically and socially conform and like we do these things and we do those things. and then like you just see you get you just see people like wow nineteen thirty five <laughs> shit like you got like wow tell me yeah don't go around that block now there you sorry you gonna get no I wish people still talk like that too huh 
I wish people still talked like that too. Why did everyone sound like that? The Why did every girl sound like 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 oh like like did that shit with their? I don't I don't understand. That was Mickey Mouse having. That sounded really crazy. Just no. That was Mickey Mouse. Speaking of speaking of kids, by the way, Jimmy. Um, I know we're all talking about everyone's kids. Uh, here I don't have any kids. Um, but. Your son, this made me feel really old the other day. I was on the phone with you. I was on FaceTime with Jimmy because we we call each other every night before we go to bed. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, we talk each other in uh, over FaceTime. And so I was, I was talking to Jimmy and his son was there. And he was telling me that he didn't know who Kanye West was. And I that know. made me feel really fucking old. And I had to put it out. I was like, dude, I feel like I failed as a parent. And it's crazy because I was listening to Kanye West's album for like three days in a row because I'm trying. Oh, to- Donda? I love oh, yeah. it. I love it. I liked it too. I love his composition. I love how he creates it straight from the ether of his own soul. Like he makes his his own beats. He composes everything. He The bars, the melody, everything is like crazy. Anyway, I've been very good about on the podcast not talking about Kanye West because I'm a very big Kanye West fan. And I, I try. I feel like all my opinions are biased. So yeah. I try not to talk about him, me personally. Okay, I don't give a shit. I love that motherfucker. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I do too. Like, <laughs> my son, right? We've been listening to this shit for three days. And I'm like, yeah, man, we're about to play Kanye. And he was like, who's Kanye? And I was like. <laughs> I know. And I felt so old when he did that. I was like, what? <laughs> who's Kanye? He's the who's voice Kanye? of a generation. He's <laughs> <laughs> been singing a song for two days. Oh, my God. You, you know, before before we get into really anything oh, else. Man. uh I wanted to get into one of our segments, um, and then we got more questions for one, of course. But uh, I wanted to get into one of our segments here. We always do at Great. Well, we've been doing for the last few episodes now, um, and that is, of course, Stephanie's facts. Stephanie, Are you, you got ready? some facts for us as you eat that cookie. Oh, sure. right. um, this is not a cookie. This is a piece of salami. This is salami frito. And that's a fact for your ass right there. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think it's time. I think it's time for Stephanie to give us a fucking fix. Stephanie. Oh, yeah, baby. And that was, of course, the jingle for Stephanie's facts. Stephanie, let's hear some fucking facts. I bet. This day in history, Mm. Brazil declared its independence from Portugal. Did you know that? This day in history, what year? 1822. Hmm. I did not know that. Uh Uh-huh. And then, let's see. The (laughs) Entertainment and Sports Programming Network, ESPN, made its debut on cable TV on uh, 1979. Oh, okay. That sounds about right. I didn't know that exactly, but that sounds about right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, Desmond Tutu became the first black to lead the Anglican Church in Southern Africa, and that was in 1986. Did you know that? No, you I didn't, didn't know that. There you go. What was and his name? Desmond Tutu. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then um, let's see. Oh, no, you probably know this. I'm not going to even say that. Mm, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. What was it? I want to hear it. Nazi Germany began its initial blitz on London during World War II. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't have oh, the right. history team. I didn't know that. Thank you. Wait, who's, Nazi, who's Nazi Germany? Is that, a, is that a rapper? Yeah. It's a rapper. Yeah. The record label. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, the Boxer Rebellion in China officially ended with the signing of the Peking Protocol, the a.k.a. Peace of Beijing. And that happened in 1901. Did you know that? I did know that one, actually. Did? I did. Why the hell did you stop me? You should stop oh, sorry. Me. These are for the listeners, too. I mean, it doesn't necessarily matter if I knew all of them. It's still a yeah. fact. Yeah. Yeah, you right, you right, you right. All right, guys, don't gang up on me, all right? Jesus. <laughs> We're not. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I, please I, give us more. I had your back, yo. Yeah, like, what happened? You. No one's attacking you at all. We're big fans of you, Stephanie. Yes, no, Steph. arms, arms likes to, to attack me sometimes, guys. Only if it's a ghost fact. Oh, God. Hey, now you're calling me a crybaby. I feel attacked. <laughs> um. So a narwhal's tux 
reveals its past living conditions. Did you know that? How? And I didn't know that. So um, it says here, much like the rings of a tree can tell you its age and provide clues about the life it has lived, so too does the long tusk of the narwhal. Um, recent research led by a bioscience professor at Denmark's university has shown that this peculiar ar- Arctic whale adds a layer to its distinctive tusk each year. Wow, that's actually quite fascinating. I didn't know that. Yeah, that is cool. That's I pretty cool. You said narwhal, and I was thinking the interviewer, and I thought you said tux, like tuxedo. And then I'm like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was a and then I'm thinking, how does he know so much about everybody? That's, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the narwhal. Guys, guys, did you know the severed head of a Cisla can grow a whole new body? I think I I think I've heard of that. I, isn't that like true though for like a lot of like what are they called? Like slugs and snails and like worm can't worms do that? Like if you cut a worm, yeah, worms can do that. Work. Yeah. A weird shit like that. So I kinda knew that. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> some sneak <laughs> some sea snakes can breathe through their skin. Did you know that? I did not know that. That's quite interesting, though. How about, uh, how about like five more facts? I bet. I got you. Did you know that the moon has moonquakes? Really? <laughs> Ooh, yes. Moonquake. I get it because it's not an earthquake. It's a moonquake. Uh, okay. I want to hear. I want to hear Does some people laugh. And that was the funniest joke said on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the people laughing, Jimmy? I want to hear some some people laughing at that. <laughs> Wait, what? What was the joke? That, you just told the joke. What are you talking about? That wasn't the, a joke. The, <laughs> you, okay, never mind. I thought it was funny. I was just saying, <laughs> never mind. I'm a, that was a serious question. I, that I, was a serious answer to that. I mean, you can have you can have earthquakes on the moon. There's no yeah, earth on I, the moon. That, that's why it was funny. It's like that's <laughs> absolutely right. Yeah, not- <laughs> you can't have an earthquake on the moon. Yeah, yeah. Can you have moonquakes on the earth though? Probably not. I'd, I I would go on out on a limb and say no. I'm no scientist myself, but I would say no. <laughs> but that was great. I oh, thought what you said was guys, funny. Listen, listen, my friend. All right, four more. Hey, so goosebumps are meant to ward off predators. Did you know that? Yes, I did know that. It's the Do same you know? when you get them, the hair on the back of your neck also sticks up. It's kind of like a... Like when animals are like defensive and like like birds sometimes will like show their feathers and shit. Why do you have to fucking talk about a bird? Why? Why do you have to talk shit like I brought that? it up for you, Stephanie. It just it doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you do that to me? You, you ever see a peacock? Oh, I fucking hate birds. Peacock. That's a beautiful bird, though. Why? Ugly. Okay, so when I was seven years old, I don't know if I said <laughs> this story, but when I was seven years old, my grandma used to throw hitas, right? They're like little trips to Atlantic City. Right, and my grandma bought me cafe with panko right. mantequilla. Oh, I know where this is going. And you know, so we were we we had parked right in front of Bally's. The guy came and was like, you know, here's your here's your twenty dollar voucher, whatever, whatever. And so I'm like, okay, I'm seven years old, and you know, I'm minding my own fucking business, and I have a bag full of panko mantequilla. And so what happened? So I step out the bus and I start, I see, I see a little cute bird. The, you know, the, the, the ones that don't walk, they just hop. Tick, tick, tick. So you know, <laughs> I, felt, I felt one, right? And then my grandmother's like, Estefani, ten cuidado. You have to be careful, Stephanie, because the birds are going to come. And you know, I'm fucking seven. So I'm like, all right, whatever, grandma. And here I am, throwing more fucking bread. And one thing led to a fucking other. I had like all types of motherfucking species surrounding me and I was shook as fuck. I mean, when I told you that I was so freaking scared, scared for my life, but what traumatized me was when my grandmother saw me uh, crying. She shooed them, right? She's like, shoo, shoo, shoo. All I fucking felt was the feathers and I heard the (laughs) and you know, ever since then, I fucking hated birds. I think pigeons are deadly animals. Why do they even have red eyes? Like, why? So you're going to become so they can see through your soul with that story. Like you, you're going to become like pigeon woman, because that's kind of like how Batman became Batman is like he fell down in a well and a bunch of bats came flying out and scared him. And now he dresses as the thing he's afraid of to strike fear into criminals. So you're going to be out there in the middle of the night 
in New Jersey, fuck it, fucking up criminals dressed as a fucking pigeon. Now you know that's your. Gonna that's be your dressed like the lady you know? at the like the lady at the end of Home Alone with a, with an army yeah. of birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'll see. St- they'll be like they'll put out like a fucking like like the shape of a pigeon in the sky, and everyone will Yo, be like, hey, "I'm not going be, out tonight, man. That gonna pigeon lady's up. gonna be out, man." Two no. buckets of seeds, like fuck it. <laughs> I have to go through some extensive therapeutic shit for me to not be afraid of birds anymore. I am like I'm. If I see a group of birds, I am crossing the street. Like y'all don't understand. <laughs> if I go to the beach, I don't. I'm. I'm I am warning you. I'm telling you beforehand. Do not fucking no. park your shit next to the fucking garbage. You know I cursed out a mother and her son. <laughs> I cursed her out and her son. We were at fucking Coney Island Beach and, you know, there's signs plastered all over the place. Do not feed the fucking birds. Do not feed them. And what did this kid do? He started feeding birds right next to me. My friend was like, child, I don't give a shit. Children do a bunch of stupid shit. I don't care. I don't care. And what happened? So my friend was like, hey, can you can you like not do that and throw that over there like where you are? And he wasn't listening. And I started getting paranoid. Like my anxiety was at its all time high. I see fucking seagulls. And you know, the motherfuckers are predators. Okay. I mean, they will steal your food with no hesitation. They gangsters. They are the gangsters of the fucking whatever. And so, you know, he didn't listen. And then, you know, one thing led to another. And then the mother came over here and I was like, you need, you and your child need to go over there. Why the fuck are you feeding birds? There's a sign there that says, do not feed the birds. And on top of that, there's a garbage thing right there. Why? Like, why? I was like, you, you and your fucking kid need to move. And she, you know, we started arguing. And I said, listen, I don't give a fuck. And you know what I did, guys? I threw a big ass sandwich at her. And you know what happened? The fucking seagulls came and attacked her. Boom. You threw a sandwich. I fucking threw a sandwich. You she know, threw a waste of a sandwich. She threw a food grenade at her. <laughs> yeah, those seagulls were like, <laughs> and the birds go at that right now. That's the, every. You know, that's, that's amazing. Everyone, aim on that right now. Well, you know that was a great fact, Stephanie. I think that also counts as a fact. We find if I go to the beach, I'm just gonna roll with a sandwich as a as a protection. I'm just gonna yeah, throw it at people on the border. At someone, yeah, yeah, call, call. Just, <laughs> just like, <laughs> he's got this pastrami. I control the birds through Get sandwiches. Out of my and <laughs> oh Yo, my listen, god! Those birds see bread, and I don't know what happens. It's like they go crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole other story. Fucking shit. They get that happened to my bread. brother one time. Oh, right. That shit, a, a seagull came and snatched the sandwich right out of his hand. Oh yeah, crying. they'll be quick that about shit it too. Funny as hell. Fucking come down and be gone again, man. They're hey, I have hard. one more bird story. Can I share? It? It's gonna be quick. No, no, no. We need two more facts. Damn. All right, fine. All right, you can tell if it's quick. Okay, so I was in Florida with my family, and we went to Gatorland. And, you know, over there, they they have, you know, a bunch of gators and shit like that, and they have all, a bunch of animals and whatever. And then they have birds, right? They just have birds because, you know, it's fucking Florida. <laughs> right? Wait, they do? Yeah, they you know, birds. They just be flying all over the place. And there was this big-ass fucking bird. I don't even know. He has to be, like, three feet. Right. And so my mom had just bought me a pack of fish. Right. Because I wanted to feed the alligators. So, yo, guys, this fucking bird. I don't know if it was a fucking pelican. I don't know what the fuck it was, but it was it, it ran after me. And and here I am with a bag of fucking fish and I'm running down this this bridge. And everybody's like, let go of the bag. Let go of the bag. And I panicked and I threw the bag into the fucking alligator pit and the bird died. It was oh, like, so you you wait. So- the just, alligator ate the bird because yeah, the bird went and after the, the food. And the oh. It was great. It was great. <laughs> Victory. That's psychotic. <laughs> I loved it because that's karma for that ass. Why are you fucking, you know? I can just imagine a younger Stephanie just like <laughs> leaning over this like railing, looking at this alligator. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, can you imagine the looks on the other kids that are looking at that bird get like devoured by the alligator? Yeah. Like, no! They're like, oh my god! And Stephanie's like, hey, fucking scum. Yeah, there was like, a kid <laughs> waiting in line to associate with that bird. They were like, oh, I want to be chased by birds. I want to play with the bird next. And some oh. Karen was there like, someone do something! Yeah. So I know now that if Stephanie becomes a billionaire one day, right, she's going to get her own little castle, right, and she's going to get a moat around the castle, and there's going to be alligators in the moat. And whenever she sees a bird, she'll be like, hey, you want some of this bread? And just, like, throws it into the moat and just watches these alligators go fucking nuts on these birds. really enjoyed that shit. I'm not going to lie. Like, it, it, it may seem a little, you know, sick, 
But you know, I, severe color ish. Yeah, but you know, I was happy about it because you know you was really going to attack me. You was gonna hurt me with your long ass beak, and you know, <laughs> <that's not nice. laughs> all right, all right. I gotta, I got. I'm sorry. I gotta be the bad guy here. We're, we're, we're we've we've been talking about birds for a little too long now. Please, <laughs> more facts, and then we gotta get back to our guest here. Okay, okay, okay. So the wood frog can hold this pee for up to eight months. Did you know that? I didn't know that. What is a wood frog? I gotta look that up. Can we get a picture of that? Maybe. Outside. I would for eight months though. Yeah. Wood frog? You're like W O O D? Correct. Okay. You want to see a picture of it? Yeah, let's bring it up on the screen. All right. Please. Yeah, absolutely. Please and thank. And uh Stephanie, please, one more one oh, more fact to close it out. Oh, that's a wood frog. Look at that. Oh, you look cute. A little cute thing. This shit gives you warts. I that is a urban legend. <laughs> it's a fact. That's what uh, she said. <laughs> is that your final fact? No, no. <laughs> No. Okay. You lose up to 30% of your taste buds during flight. Did you know that? During flight? See. Si. Oh, I didn't know that. Wait, so what happens? Do they just come back? Like, how, what do you mean they're gone? So it says, this might explain why airplane food gets such a bad reputation. The elevation in airplane can have a detrimental effect on our ability to taste things. According to a 2010 study um, conducted by Germany's <clears throat> Institution for Building Physics, the dryness experienced at a high elevation as well as low pressure reduces the sensitivities of a person's taste bud to sweet and salty foods about 30%. Is that why they give out peanuts? I, I would assume so. I don't think they give out peanuts anymore. They don't give out peanuts anymore. Yeah. Because yeah. of food allergens. Yeah, you can't yeah. eat peanuts on a plane anymore, especially if there's... Well, usually they they won't do it unless someone on the flight has said that they have uh, food allergens, like peanut allergens. Yeah. That's uh because I don't think I've ever really... I've been flying a lot these last, like, seven years, I'd say, and I don't think I've ever really gotten peanuts on a fucking plane, unless you brought them yourself. Yeah. But yeah, there you go. There's that was, of course, Stephanie's facts, guys. They, you know, we, we always like doing that. Stephanie, if you want more Stephanie's facts, you can go on the Great Morning Instagram page and uh, you'll you'll see them. She pretty much uh, does it daily. Um, she's very good with that. <laughs> yes, of course. Thank you, Stephanie, again for the facts. Um, but one, I got a question for you. How do you convince, right? I don't know if convince is the word, but how do you like help an artist, a new artist out there, understand that working with a producer is probably more beneficial for their music career than trying to do, say, everything themselves? Now, I'm not saying that wouldn't work because people have done that before. But like, you know, for instance, like I've met artists, not not like I'm not saying like anyone that's been on the podcast, but I've met artists before that are like, oh, yeah, like I do everything. I don't want to go to anyone like I got my own computer. I got my own microphone. I got my own setup. I got my own tiny room that I fucking record in. And then I hit the buttons and everything like, you know, I don't know how it all works. But how do you how do you as a producer help an artist understand like, hey, man, yeah, like you're paying money. But like we really help in in that for you. So what I would say to someone is like this, right? Like, OK, if you're we're trying to get to a destination, you're trying to get from point A to point B, right? Yeah. Now. You can do that alone. You can get in the car and you can drive by yourself. You can read the map. You can try to navigate it for yourself. You can stop whenever you got to rest. You can take the long way and you may potentially get there. You might not. You know, you might exhaust yourself halfway there, weigh yourself out and figure like, yo, you know what? I need to double back. Or mm -hmm. you could go with a partner, someone that knows where you're trying to go. They see the road. They see the path. You know, someone that will help read the map, someone that will take get behind the wheel when you when you can't, you know, and help you get there because, and you know, initially two heads are better than one. Yeah. And if I would like to work with artists that I feel we can complement each other, you know, I'm not going to try to produce outside my realm. If I feel like our our uh, music chemistry doesn't necessarily click, I'm not trying to force anything. So, you know. I look at it like it's it's something that's mutually beneficial. So and leave it up to them because generally, you know, you don't want to convince someone to do something that they're that they're not uh, open to doing because that's when you get a lot of uh, pushback or you know things don't necessarily uh, coincide the way they're supposed to. So I generally don't like to go against the grain. You know, if you if if 
if you're open to working, we can work and we can kind of like dive into the whole creative aspect. But not everybody sees it that way. You know, it's like you said, some people want to do it their way um, or some people just have their own method of doing things, you know, like no way of no way is kind of wrong, I guess. But you do get further working with people than you get doing things all by yourself. Do you think it's more of uh, money reasons or just like people are very distrusting? Like, do you like do you think it, it, like if instead of going to you, it's because like most people are like, oh, I don't know if I have enough money to, you know, you know, pay a producer to help with these things. Or it's just like, you know, I don't fucking trust people. Um, I think it could be a little bit of both, depending on the circumstances. Like, I yeah. think that um, <clears throat> money shouldn't be money shouldn't always be a, a determining factor when it comes to creativity. Yeah. Um, I'm a big uh, believer of um, not letting um bad business get in the way of good music you know so you know if we can figure a way to make this happen logistically you know let's let's sit down you know whether we got to work out a percentage you know whether i have to um you know maybe forfeit forfeit some upfront money for uh, a little more on the back end maybe you know or vice versa you know um i think it's it's really circumstantial on a case by case level but the reality is that you working with a producer gives you a certain um it may i think it'll make the project more complete when you listen to projects that are executive produced by this by the person who's composing most of the music there's a certain um how do i explain it like it tells a story through audio you know versus getting a beat from this producer and getting a beat from that producer and kind of just like creating this collage of sounds which is cool too if if that's what you're going for but i think the the bigger classic albums tend to be the ones that are you know linked up like your um like Nas's album with with, with dj premier you know like the stuff that rizzo was doing with wu-tang like even i mean even outside of hip-hop like uh what, what timberland had did with justin timberlake you know like those those albums are like they're they're sonically synced you know, like there's a certain there's a certain vibe and, and energy that those that those um, projects have, you know, and I think that when you experiment with too many different sounds from too many different people, it's kind of like having too many chefs in the kitchen. You know, it could be a great thing, you know, if all of these people are on the same page or it could be a freaking catastrophe because, you know, one person's palate is different from everyone else's and no one's on the same page. So. I like that metaphor. I got a, you know, I got a question. Okay. So, and this is, I believe that this is on topic and, and kind of in realm with what you're saying. Um, but DJ Khaled, right? Mm -hmm. Good friend. Yeah. Good friend of ours. DJ, mm -hmm. DJ Khaled, man. Come back on the show. First name, DJ. First name, DJ. <laughs> Last name, Khaled. Last name, Khaled. <laughs> so, he's kind of a producer, right? Like he's known for... Is he known for DJing or is he known for producing? Like, what is it that he's truly doing in the industry from like a logistical standpoint of the right now? You have more knowledge in this than I do. Uh, so what, what Khaled, Khaled's role in hip hop is he's an executive producer. So um, an executive producer plays many roles. Um, <clears throat> for example, um, I hear a beat. I'm the executive producer. I'm sitting in a session with producers, right? I got multiple producers around me. I'm 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 trying to create a, a curate a vibe. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what Khaled is essentially doing. He's curating a sound. So, you know, he taps in with a circle of producers. He grabs a couple of beats. I think this person will sound great on this. I think this person will sound great on this. I think this person will sound great on this. Boom. So now I have my these records. And now it's time to tap in with the artist. Now he reaches out, you know, or however his relationship or connectivity is with those artists, he's able to make those connections and then essentially package that as an album. And he's just doing that repeatedly. So um, is, is he making the beats? I don't know. I don't want to say yes. I don't want to say no. You know, I know that he works with a team of producers. How much influence does he necessarily have over the sound as far as the beats? You know, maybe he's not the producer on the record, but he's the executive producer as far as like um, being able to 
pull together all of these different resources to create the um the overall outcome which is the song so let's say i'm an executive because i'm I'm trying to i'm actually studying things like this because i used to be on the front front end of like media social media i was this close to being snapchat verified it's a it's a crazy story but i want to be more like background kind of like background in the scenes and i was in a lot of different roles and i'm like man dj khaled he's still eating but I don't actually hear him on the tracks. I just hear him say, DJ Khaled. And then he gets all these great artists to make these bangers. And he's promoting these bangers. And then, of course, he has the ability to spin them in the clubs, too, right? So he's getting paid to spin and to, to hype it up. But he's like, if you think about it, he's just like kind of on the back end of things making shit happen, right? Um, Yes and no. I mean, Khaled, you got to remember, like, Khaled has been in the game for a long time. So he his... his um his groundwork was in DJing, you know, but then um, we, uh, working with Fat Joe and, and getting solidified with Terror Squad, um, he was able to learn the business. And that's when he started We The Best Music. And uh, what he actually did was he signed himself to his own label as an artist. Mm. So, you know, so that's where, so the reason why he's so successful is because he's releasing his music under his label as an artist. So he's an artist as DJ Khaled. So DJ Khaled presents all of these albums are being released as DJ Khaled. And he's doing the back end work as far as executive producing it. So he's 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 winning on different on different scales. You know, if you think about it, it's kind of like the equivalent of what of what Diddy did with Bad Boy. You know, except what Khaled's doing is instead of signing these different artists, he's just networking with them and working with them outside of his umbrella see what diddy did was he was signing these artists and curating these albums and diddy was doing the same thing i don't i don't i'm not not to say that diddy wasn't producing but i know that diddy had a lot of role in executive producing curating the sounds getting the producers together working with stevie j working with the writers getting these people together and then building those albums so like even with his debut album what was it puff daddy and the family it was a curated album it wasn't just diddy it was the locks it was mace it was fake Evans. it was 112 it was biggie you know what i'm saying like it was a, a a whole barrage of these different banging artists like they were really like the top artists at the time so khaled's kind of doing the same thing but not under a label he's kind of just paying them for the features he's if i'm not mistaken i believe that he's buying the rights to all the music so that that way he can register it all through we the best and capitalize on 100 percent royalties which is what you want to do you know I'm- so he's dropping like oh, for example drake right let's say drake gets on something yeah like drake i'm gonna send you two hundred thousand for a feature and then he now owns everything Drake did. Yeah, I mean Drake will still get performance royalties because you know, as as he because <clears throat> he still performs on on the record. But um, I believe that the bulk will go to whoever owns the master, whoever produced it, and whoever owns the um, the or the rights to the pub, uh to the to the publishing. Hell yeah! Your knowledge on that subject uh, impressed me. By the way, that was really. That's that why I like, I like, <laughs> thanks I like for asking that question, of, Jimmy. I like these type of interviews. I, li- I like talking to producers a lot and I love talking to artists, but artists are very like in their ways. Like they're kind of like, that's kind of what I brought up before is like, everyone's kind of got their positions sometimes. Everyone's kind of got their thing, right? Like the artist is like the ego is like the attitude, the the face of the, the song and stuff. But then you get these cats in the background that just know how the shit works and how the shit you just have to know the logistics i think that if like a lot of these artists are if if they learn how to um if they just inform themselves more on on the back end shit they'll be a lot more successful especially financially like a lot of artists they like <clears throat> today i speak with artists and sometimes they want to work and i'm like all right well you know like what's your ascap situation like and they're like 
Huh? Are you are you are you signed with ASCAP, BMI, you know, CSAC? Do you have some type of like, you know, do you have a publishing company? Like the shit is it's 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 not expensive to set up. It's not hard to set up. You know, are you registering your music or are you just putting it on streaming services? Well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is, do you go to work to clock? Do you clock in when you go to work or do you go to work for free? You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's what people don't realize. They think that if they just put their music up on these streaming services, that that's where they're going to get their money. And the money comes from registering your music with your publishing companies. And then that way you receive your royalties. Getting paid for streams isn't the same as royalties. And a lot of artists don't understand this. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like I think that that's where the disconnect is. A lot of this, a lot of it is that the 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 average artist doesn't really understand how how the payout works. So that they're, they're kind of just shorting themselves because they're just trying to put music out for the sake of putting music out without properly being compensated for their work. It's kind of like a photographer, right? Like, cause I do the visual side of things, right? Photography and videography. And I know that for us, you know, it's important. A lot of people overlook mm-hmm. metadata, but it's like that metadata is a direct code to your licensings. Right. And then at any time that that gets posted anywhere, Internet's going to say, OK, copyright is unreleased. It's metadata. It's locked. And that's why a lot of images will get taken down or you have to get licensings for a different type of images. So that's really interesting, man. And I, I kind of I think if artists just knew that right there, that token, that nugget, they'd probably be a lot farther than where they are. You know, the tedious process, I won't lie, but I think that. um you know, everyone should do it or at least have delegate someone to do it so that that way it's done, whether you're doing it yourself or whether, you know, you're making someone do it or having someone having it done, paying someone to do it. it, 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 It'll just help you so much more in the, in the, in the creative process. Just, I want to segue into this, man, but speaking more into the creative process here, we have a little creative process of our own on the show and it's definitely you could say it could involve lyrics, but words are definitely a big part. No, no, hold on. Before you, that's what I was trying to say. Before you get into that, did you know that this is the second time this episode that you've brought up a philosophical question? I don't even know if you realize that. I'm good at philosophical questions. So before you brought up, like, obviously we talk, it's, I don't know if that's a question, but it's kind of like the one door closes, another opens. Like, that's like always going to happen like that. This time you, you kind of, initiated the old fable of the monkey the dancing monkey and the monkey's keeper have you ever heard that fable Mm -hmm. that like everyone goes to see the monkey dance and pays to see the monkey dance and the monkey knows that everyone has come to see him and he thinks to himself that you know i'm the star here everyone comes to see me i don't need this man but he never leaves because he knows the man takes him everywhere for people to see. And although he's the star, the man gets all the money and stuff. That's the old fable. I don't know if you even realize you brought that up. Yeah. So it's kind of like it never, no one ever does anything. The monkey just so, keeps dancing. That's like a, that's a thing too. just leadership in general, right? You mm-hmm. want to, and it's really a rare quality, but you know, I think, like the monkey and the man, I believe that if the man is going to lead the monkey, you got to be pretty humble, right? Like humility and leadership has to go hand in hand. Because, for example, I have like 98 people right now professionally that are working for me. But it's like if it weren't for those 98 people, I would not be in the position that I'm in. And it's because of the way they execute and the way they push. I can just humbly let them shine. But I also get to eat at the same time. But if I would just want to step in and do and do and do, I'm taken away from their experience. I'm taken away from their learning abilities. And it's like, I've already been there, right? I've already done that. I've already had experience it. Now it's your turn to experience it. So you could eventually lead somebody. But that comes with experience, humility, kind of letting go of the ego, you know, and sitting back and letting the SMEs of that subject take over. Kind of like you, Merms, like I'm not as great of a writer as you, right? So when when you have an idea of how we're going to word this podcast or how this is going to come out, I 100 percent listen to that because it's always good. You know, you know, flattery will get you everywhere in life. So (laughs) please, please keep talking about how great of a writer I am. Don't stop. But, you know, I wanted to ask uh, before. Yeah. And I know you were uh, segueing into it and I'm, you know, please do. Uh, 
Are you all right? What's going on with your mouth right now, Jimmy? It looks like you got like a fucking like bee sting or something. What's going on over there? Yeah. I got stung by a bee. You got stung by a bee while we were recording. In the face. Now you're kind of hiding it behind the microphone. Can you just move to the side a little bit there, buddy? It's swelling. (laughs) What happened? I got stung by a bee. All right. All right. All right. We'll let it go. All right. (laughs) I I guess he doesn't want to talk about it. I don't know what's going on over there. Um, But, you know, you were, you know, I'm going to let, I'm going to let you say it. You were talking about words before. Yeah, man. I think it's definitely that time because I, I think it's time. Game, but we're coming up on time. We are coming up on time. We've been talking for a while. And I think it's important that we hit this one. So I think it is important, too. I think it's about that time we uh, we do one of our favorite segments we do here at Great Morning. And that is, of course, the word of the day. Word. 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 Word of the day. Oh. <laughs> that ended abruptly. <laughs> so one, uh, you can see uh, Jimmy's screen, right? You're on your computer right now, right? Yeah, I see Jimmy's screen. So you're looking at Jimmy's screen. He's uh, he's got his hand on uh, something there. I don't know if you can quite see it, but uh, it's a very old and uh, it, very 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 ancient. You could even say dictionary. I don't oh, know if you see whoa. that? He got a... that. It's a it's been a, a you know a, a, a relic in his family. For many generations, um, we call it the big old dick in the room. So he's going to open that dick, right? <laughs> and hey, he's going he's gonna to put his finger down on that dick, and he's going to lift his finger up. And whatever his finger landed on will be our word of the day. Now, with season three of Great Morning, all of our guests have then had to use whatever the word is in their own sentence. Okay. And at the end of this season, which is coming up, we've already started working on this. We are going to rate our top 10 guests' sentences with their words. So it's completely random. There's no bias. You're going to get a word. He's going to give the definition. He's going to spell it. I'll give the modern day definition if it needs it. And then you got to give us a sentence. You ready? <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Hell yeah. Let's take a gander. Because we're on the word of the day. And I'm flipping through the pages. Flip it and flip. Flip, flip. <laughs> Bam. You see me looking at you, right? I see you looking at me. All right. I'm about to look at the book. Let's go. 100% random. Oh, Oh, this is going to be great. Yeah, this is a problem with this uh, old old dick we got is that it's a lot of the words it has are uh, like they're not used anymore in our language. This is going to be great. Some of them are very old words that we have to, you know. All right. Do our best with. The word is hypobulic. Hi- hypobulic hypobulic okay. uh inactive will also manifesting a primitive type of will hypobulic can you spell it please sure h y p o b u l i c hypobulic 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 um so the modern day definition is weak willed lacking willpower Mm. Hypobulic. Hypobulic. I believe that is the way to pronounce it. You can pronounce it, of course, the way we are pronouncing it. You won't get points off because of that. If we find out later that it was actually pronounced hypobulic or something, I don't fucking know. Hypobulic. Should I play, hypobulic. It, in, the, should I play it in the dictionary? What? Um, if you want, but uh, one, uh, you know, now that you know the definition and uh, the word, you think you got a sentence for us? Uh, hypobulic, or maybe it's you know what it's it's probably hippobulic because why? the Y comes immediately after the H. But why but, are we using the 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 Google thing to find out how it really sounds? I mean, Jimmy's doing. He said he was doing that right now. Oh, he is. I'm sorry. All right, Stephanie, come on. All right, fuck. We got. Okay, I'm sorry. On our ass over here. We're doing our best. All right. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at Jimmy's mouth, everyone, real quick before he hides behind the mic. It doesn't show up. <laughs> It says no suggestions. Did someone punch you? What happened? <laughs> it says no. It says no suggestions, Merms. Yeah, it's all okay. Easy. All right, <laughs> we're just gonna ignore that. Um. So, uh, all right. It yeah, seems man. that the B flew in and bit Jimerson in the face, and now he has a hyperbuic uh, reaction going on. Uh, all right. I like that. That was relative. I like that. That was relative. Uh, whole lot of 
whole hey, lot guys. of tension on my mouth right now. <laughs> Look who's up, Big Bray Barney. Hey. Hey. Oh, baby daddy. Baby daddy in the house. Sorry, y'all. Hey, one, who's your favorite artist? Um, you know, it, it's they they vary depending on uh like the time and and what I'm listening to. Like right now, uh like I'm really fucking with um I'm really fucking with the that Drake album. Uh but like off like the most recent shit, like I like like St. John. I like um Ooh, I love St. John. That's a dope Yeah, yeah. St. John is dope. I fuck with St. John. Like uh I like how he's like pushing the sound, like it's like real some real different shit. Um I like uh you got a Drake song right now that you kind of fucking with? I didn't uh, listen no, to his new album. No Friends in the Industry is is one of them. Um Pipe Down, uh Champagne Poetry. Uh those are like just like the three that really uh catch my attention off the t- like uh, um off the top. So as a producer, I'm going to take oh, I got a game. Oh, and that was the jingle for Jimmy's game. Jimmy, what's the game? All right. I'm going to be a rapper, but I'm going to be 6'9", right? Wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Is this, is this a game or is this an improv? This is like a game. Okay. Yeah. This hey. is, is it a, is, is, this is a game. It's a you game. tell me because there's a different jingle for improv. That's why I say that. Well, it's not improv because I'm not improv. I'm a rapper. So I'm going to be 6'9", okay. okay? Merms, you're going to be another rapper and Steph, you're going to be another rapper we're going to take the lyrics here from drake's no friends in the industry and we are going to hit a verse as if we're another artist and one you got to say who you're going with i'm confused <laughs> I'm gonna, we're gonna rap you're gonna rap like whatever you want me to rap to so he's gonna rapper. rap like six nine you're gonna rap like whoever art whichever artist you choose and stuff will rap as a, a different artist am i correct mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. okay so first of all okay. i'm not a good rapper uh as christian murmur so i mean as another person this so you could be blue face you know what i'm saying you'll be off right you'll be off beat and it'll be cool yeah i uh <laughs> who who oh, man, I'm fired. All right, so here, I'll go first. Just to make this easier for everybody, I'm going to share my screen. I got the lyrics pulled up right here. Oh, I'll be a little Nas X. Okay. <laughs> I got the screen up. Can everybody see the yeah. lyrics? I see them. Can everybody see the lyrics? Yeah, yes. I see them. All right. We're going to keep the audio off because I don't want us to get flagged on Apple or Spotify. So I'm going to pretend like this is a poetic word, but I'll be 6'9 and, and I'll go first. Okay. So wait, wait, when do we come in though? Like, are you reading the first uh, stanza and then yeah. like I'll come I'll in do the, the second first stanza? Merms, okay. you do the second stanza. Okay. Steph, you do the third and then I'll follow. And then Merms, you follow me. And then Steph, you follow me. And we're going to make a song out of this song. I guess I'm just going to freestyle it. Nobody judge me. Ready? I'm as ready as I'll ever be, baby. Yeah, snitch more. Yeah, y'all gotta be like me. Uh, Bronx. No friends in the industry. My brother's been my brother's man. You niggas ain't no kin to me. A fact. Wow. Yeah, you heard about me. You don't know more than that. Yeah, I know. I, hey, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> No friends in the industry. My brother's been my brother's, man. You <coughs> um, ain't no kin to me. A fact, whoa. I was known for snapping when I chat before the app. Stood on everything I said and never took it back. Whoa. No <laughs> friends in the industry. I had to draw the line between my brothers and my enemies. A fact. Love to start the beef. Don't want to keep it rap. Yeah. You hit us up, and now we owe you something back. See, when I was a young angel, but these niggas turned me evil. Yeah, I know, I know you know, but you really ain't my people. Yeah, I heard some people say they know as my equal. Trippy told me that some of these niggas, girl, I don't compete with them. Ask about the boy, and they gonna say they ass got the streets with them. Niggas so offensive, knowing they... What? 
knowing they don't have no defense, <laughs> why they always act like we can fix it with a meeting. All that linking up, man, I'm going to see ya when I see ya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your brother's been my brother's man. You niggas ain't no kin. And that's a fact. Hey, <laughs> and I'm like, Shakari, smoke them on and off the track. Hey, and you love that hoe but me, but I put her on my back. You get Drizzy on the track. He'll put you on the mat. Um, what else? Oh, it's like <laughs> <laughs> done. <laughs> oh, that was so good too. Yeah, no, yeah, she been, was snapping. Me. Brothers been my brothers, man. You cause ain't no kin to me. Wow. I was there for snapping when I chopped before the app stood on everything. Oh. I never took it back except I snitched. No friends in the industry. Snitch, snitch, snitch. I had to draw the line between my brothers and my enemies. Snitch, nigga, yeah. love us on the beef. Snitch, don't want to keep it wrapped. Snitch, Trey Way, yeah, you hit us up. Now you owe something. Trey, did we got something? I, I mean, Steph was snapping. Yeah, that was really good, Steph. <laughs> Steph, Steph was snapping. I, you know, it's that, you know, my baby dad is next to me. So I, I kind of got nervous because he told me to do this shit one day. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing this shit for you. And then, you know, he's staring you down. He's like, don't yeah, there's, there's a lot of pressure and shit. But go ahead. It's like, yeah, rap for me. <laughs> Especially Merms, man. You, you know, you really had that enunciation. I, um, I, next time, can we do a song? I mean, obviously, I can't say the N word. So can we do a song where, like, I don't have to just pause? <laughs> like, I, I liked I liked the subtle <clears throat> over the yeah, word. Like, like, I didn't, I didn't. like no friends in the industry. My, <clears throat> my yeah. friends in the- <laughs> that's why I was kind of going slow on purpose I because I didn't want to like accidentally read something and then there goes my career. It's like <laughs> royalty was about to drop the hottest sixteen in the world. Mm. That was fun. That again, that's oh Jimmy's Jimmy Jimmy's coming through with these like we we got to read shit. I like this is uh this kind of goes hand in hand with the last game a little bit, I, although I, that was I, different. Yo. But Stephanie, was, you never even told us what rapper you were like. Oh, I was, I was honestly, I was trying to channel in my Nikki because honestly speaking, like I was, I was gonna go fucking. I was about to turn the fuck up if I if I was gonna be able to fucking pick a verse and I was gonna pick Monster, you know, because she bodied everybody on Monster. I don't care what nobody say. Hold up, but can you spit the Nikki Monster verse word for word? Let's yeah. see. Oh my God! See why y'all doing my baby daddy's here. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Here you go. You ready, Steph? Okay. All right, we're going to drop it in. Pull up in the monster automobile gangster with a bad bitch that came from Sri Lanka. Yeah, I'm in that Tonka color, Willy Wonka. You could be the king, but watch the queen cry. Okay, first things first, I'll eat your braids. And then I'm going to start rocking gold teeth and fangs. Because that's what a motherfucking monster do. Hairdresser from Milan, that's the monster do. Monster just to be heels, that's the monster shoe. Young money is the roster and the monster crew. And I pull up, pull up, pull up in the bank with the funny face. And if I'm fake, I ain't noticed because my money is so let me get this straight wait i'm the rookie but my features in my shows 10 times your pay 50k for verse no album out yeah my money's so tall that my barbie's gotta climb it hotter than a middle east to climb it violet tony mataran that's he whine it whine it nikki on them titties when i sign it that's how oh well my bad that's how i got this nigga so one track minded but really really i don't give a f-u-c-k forget barbie fuck nikki because she's fake she's on a diet but my pocket's eating cheesecake and i'll say oh and i'll say bride of chicken chucky is child's play just kill the cut oh just killed another career it's a mild day besides yeah they can't stand besides me i think me oh i think me and you and blah 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 blah, blah, blah. anyway i think big get cash make a blink fast now look at what you just saw. This is what you live for. Ah! I'm a motherfucking monster. Oh! <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Got me dropping shit in my room. <laughs> I know. That was that was really good actually. Until the end there when you started like like yeah, cool. ooh. <laughs> great morning I records. Know. Baby daddy's looking at me like and I'm just like fuck. That was good. I I enjoyed that. I, I, Stephanie should do that more often. That was good. I should. I should. That should but you be- know, I'm sorry, guys. Like we're we're get, we're getting to that fucking time. We're getting to that fucking time. <laughs> that that fucking that sad that sad 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 time of the podcast. Is it, is it sad? Where uh, uh, there it is. <laughs> where we uh we go around the computer screen here and we do our last minute plugs. So Stephanie, your grace, you got any last minute plugs for listeners? Yes, I need your. I'm sorry, I'm chewing because I'm eating chocolate Hershey's. 
Oh, oh, she does that when she messages us on our group chat too. I don't know why, like she's eating and she's like, you know what? I got to send these guys a minute long voice <laughs> message of me fucking chewing and be like, hey guys. So <laughs> the other day. Shout out to our sponsor, Hershey's. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need y'all to follow all of my social media accounts. All right. I love y'all to death. I'm almost at 15,000, so y'all already know, our listeners, you know what happens after 15,000. Our OnlyFans is going up, baby. We going to it out. But anyway, what about One Napkin, too? Oh, of course. And shout out to fucking One Napkin. I mean, not, not One Napkin, Five Napkin. You fucking up my endorsement deal. 17 Napkin, that one. Yeah. So <laughs> shout out to Five Napkin, you know, because I'm still trying to be their food blogger. And so, you know, if you're in New York City, get it together and go to Five Napkin and tell them that Stephanie referred you and that you want Stephanie to be their new content creator and food blogger. My tick, I have two TikToks, right? So Steffi is the first one, is the original. You know what I'm saying? That's the gang, gang, gang one. So that one is Steffi, S-T-E-P-H, level Y with two underscores and the number zero. I need y'all to follow that account. Then I'm going to need y'all to follow the other account because you know that other account is popping too. That one is great morning underscore Steph with two H's at the end. And most importantly, Instagram. Y'all need to follow me on Instagram. So y'all already know what that is. That's you love Steph with two underscores. And um, most importantly, guys, love and respect yourselves and um, keep up the fucking good vibes. And thank you for listening and just thank you for everything. And Yo, can y'all buy some merch? I would really, 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 really love and appreciate it. You know, if if, if Jimmy or Marms came and told us that, you know, our listeners is buying merch. So I would appreciate it if y'all, um, you know, bought some merch. And that's it. I love y'all guys. And that's it from the Puerto Rican Mamacita. Great last minute plug, Stephanie. Thank you for that. And of course, uh, Jimmy, my friend, you got any last minute plugs for listeners? Yeah, man. You guys can follow me on Instagram at slightly special with two L's on the end. If you want, you can follow me on TikTok. At slightly special with three L's on the end because everybody keeps taking my slightly special tag. I don't know what the fuck going on around here, but I'm the only slightly special. I've been slightly special since 2010. All right. I am the OG slightly special. You can follow me on Snapchat too. Fuck it. At slightly special. <laughs> Get in there. You heard? Get them filters up. Also, it is September, man. So it is definitely, you know, like mental awareness month and just health consciousness. And there's a lot of things going on, man. So if you if y'all feel like you need some help, man, go see somebody, go talk to somebody, talk it out, meditate, exercise, eat good, wake up at 4 a.m., man, and start conquering y'all's day. Facts. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like you're going to continue there. All right, I guess not. He's not even fucking answering. What, are you just going to sip your fucking coconut water there? Just not even. I'm fucking talking to you. <laughs> I can't with this guy. All right, great last minute plugs, Jimmy. Um, my last minute plugs are, of course, uh, you know, before we get into our honored guest here, of course, uh, you can follow uh, the Instagram. That is uh, great morning underscore the podcast. Uh, you can follow, like I said, these two great people. That is slightly special with two L's at the end. That is you love Steph on Instagram and all her uh, TikToks, but that's Steffi on TikTok, of course. Um, you can follow my personal. That is Christian D. Merm on Instagram. Um, you can follow uh, you know, Trip God Jimmy. That is T-R-Y-P-G-O-D-J. I am I announcements for the podcast, the official, we are starting production soon. We're getting everything ready, but our next special will of course be the long awaited the great morning Halloween spectacular part three. So Wait. stay tuned for that. We got a lot coming for that. I'm very excited. We got a lot of ideas for running for that and it's time, you know, we got, we had some homework. We we're going to decide on it. We have officially decided on the date of season three's finale. And that'll be, of course, Jimmy, your birthday, correct? November 18th. Twenty-five. I'll be twenty-five. You'll be twenty-five years old. You'll be a year older than me. Yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah, so <laughs> stay tuned for that. That's very important. We uh that's gonna be a little later than we've usually done the season finales, but that's because We've got, you know, we got a lot of work ahead of us um, and we want to get in a few more guests. So just stay tuned. We're going to keep it running as normal. So uh, stay tuned for that, guys. And of course, get the fucking merch, man. Fucking wearing it right now. Look at this shit. Look at, look at, look at. You can't see actually because it's a fucking podcast. But imagine 
a shirt that says great morning with an exclamation mark and then parentheses the podcast it's really comfy this shirt it makes me look good you know i i walk around the streets with this shirt on and just women they can't keep their fucking hands off me all right because this shirt just like defines my body man so fucking get yourself some great morning merch get yourself some slightly special merch out there as well and you know what just uh you know Give us a give us a you know a fucking five star rating on Yelp or something too as well. Yeah. All right. So before we get uh you know into our uh la- our uh, our special guest of the of the podcast, I want to thank him. Thank you so much, one for coming on. We really appreciate thank you. Thank it. Thank you for having me. You're I, I really enjoyed talking with you. Uh, you're very knowledgeable. Um, and I I had a great time with you here today. But if you have any last minute plugs where people can find you, follow you, buy stuff, fucking I don't know, message you. Please shout it out here if you want. Okay. Yeah, just uh you guys can follow me on all social media platforms, uh at one got beats, um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of that, uh, TikTok as well. Um, I'm working on an NFT line that'll be coming to open C. So feel free to um, you know, stay in touch and um yeah, and uh cop the merch, one signature brand uh on Instagram, tap in with me. We got the online store set up, so get your merch there too. Hell yeah, man. Oh, yeah, buddy. Great last minute plugs. Well, guys, that Thank was you. our episode. Great morning. <laughs> Great fucking morning, guys. Great morning. Great morning. Great morning. Great morning. Great morning. Great morning.